Okay. You all can slowly, mindfully come off the meditation. Eh? Try to maintain whatever inner peace, inner calmness, and inner awareness they here to your love for as long as you can. Then, all of the action, movement, mindful. Eh? So that the stability of mindfulness can be carried into the daily life. Mm. Okay. Anybody wants to report any meditation or ask any question? Yeah, you can raise your hand. Anybody? Don't have. Okay. And we shall continue yeah, our show. Turn to page 218, last paragraph, 5.3. Okay. <clears throat> Awareness is a silent and choiceless observation of what is. So this one, Krishnamurti defined awareness as the silent and choiceless awareness of what is. Do you know the meaning of that? Any of you can understand. Is there a difference between what he defined awareness from the one I share with you all? Sati is awareness before the knowing, okay? <clears throat> then awareness is the silent and choiceless observation of what is. So this one is sati equals awareness before the knowing. It's before you perceive, before you arise, the mundane mind. Then what is Krishna Murti's Definition of awareness. Silent observation. Ah. So this one you read, I want you all to read choice. together. <clears throat> okay. Awareness is the silent and, and choiceless and observation of what is. So the key word is silent. Awareness is the silent. And choiceless, choiceless observation. observation of what is. Eh? What is is the essence of thing. So here, this is J. Krishnamurti. Eh? So the key word of J. Krishnamurti is awareness, eh? which is he defined as a silent. Silent means what? No thought. Okay? So same or not? Huh? Then he add in this one. You know what is this? Choiceless observation of what is. Choiceless means what? You don't make choice. That's why he said, wherever there is choice, there is confusion. Means when you observe, you don't do anything. Just observe. Understand? So when you do that, the mundane mind cannot come in and interfere. Understand? The thought will not come in and ask you to do this, do that. When you can do this, 
My spelling, right? Huh? Choiceless? Yes. Uh, looks like not correct. Huh? <laughs> so when there is choiceless, means the thought is not there to make a choice. Understand? Huh? Like and dislike. Pleasant and bad. This one is addition. He put it in to make sure you don't make this mistake of making a choice. Understand? So the other way is to understand it as trust. Understand? Trust your nature to do. So when you trust, there is no interference. So it's just a pure awareness. Huh? That is the awareness nature move by itself, observe by itself, see things as they are by itself. You understand? So both is the same. Pure, what I put there is before the knowing. Knowing means what? Before you perceive. So before you perceive, you cannot think. Right? Clear or Ah, Sanya. Then the memory come in. So the content of consciousness cannot go in. Right? That's why to me, this awareness is before the knowing. Means the direct see, the pure awareness. Okay? Whereas, he is helping people to understand. Right? He put the word silent, a lot of people cannot understand him. Silent means what? No talk. Uh, don't talk. Uh. <laughs> but inside there could be chattering, you know, verbalizing. You know. But when he add in, uh, choiceless awareness means you don't do anything inside there. You know. Don't go and make choice. You know. So this choiceless observation is the silent mind observing as a, without reaction, without your prejudice coming in, and as a, without your conditioning coming in, without your belief system coming in, without your phobia, your trauma, your whatever insecurity of yeah. So all these are not there. A, that's why it's choiceless. So silent mind is your true mind, as a, your awareness nature. Observing. Observe what? Reality. What is what is? Reality. Ah, the reality, suchness, the isness of things. This is what the Buddha wants you to see. This is seeing things as they are. Understand? As they are. This is the silent awareness, direct see. As well. So when you do that, then you observe that all this happened, there is a movement. There are causes and conditions behind, just like what the Buddha saw. That's why he has a deep, he has awareness. Otherwise, how can he know this? How can he say, wherever there is a meditator, there is no meditation. Wherever there is effort, there is no meditation. Who is the meditator? The thought, isn't it? So, everything is the same when you understand. But when you don't understand, you read the code, huh? you think he's something wrong. Huh? Understand? Huh? So now I go through the code, you understand. Huh? So effort is also by the thought. You need a thought to do, understand? Huh? to know, to apply effort. Huh? So, observer and the observer also say, he said the observer is the observe. So who observe? The thought. Ah, thought observe. <laughs> what did thought observe? Another thought. Ah, another thought. Yeah, your emotion. Your sankara activity, your state of mind, your content of conscience. So thought is observing thought. But living being is so deluded, they separate the observer out. No? They say, I am observing. No? So what happened? He observed anger. He said, I have anger. Understand? But who is the I? It's the thought. Thought observing thought. No? And you go and separate and create problem for you. No? So the delusion delude you. You think the observer is the observed. But in a wrong way. Understand? Actually the observer is the observed. But you think the observer is a living being, an entity, a permanent unchanging entity. 
So I observe what I observe happening. Then I observe I have anger, I have fear. He actually not observe. No. After it happened already, uh, then the thought, uh, then he separate the two, uh, the thought say I have anger. No. And anger is an evil word. Uh, anger is bad. So you use knowledge, you end up like that. Uh, uh. Then when you say anger is me, what do you do? You want to get rid of anger, isn't it? So how you get it? <sighs> you either suppress it or control it or force it to disappear. Understand now? But who is doing that? The thought is trying to get rid of the thought, the content. I mean, you, you, you are fighting among yourself without you knowing what the hell are you doing now. And there is real delusion now. Understand now? Yes. Okay, now we read the quote. Awareness is a silent and choiceless observation of what is. In this awareness, the probe the problem unrolls itself. You understand now? When you observe what is, all of your so-called problem, first reality, of the, uh, the eight reality of the first noble truth problem, they will unfold itself. Understand now? And thus, it is fully and completely understood. Now you understand? When you are aware without choice, or when you are aware before the knowing, there is no observer doing anything. Understand? And you see things as they are. This is what the Buddha words are. But Krishna would say what is. What is is also the reality. It's also uh, as they are. Understand? Suchness. So we got different now. There is no different. Then the next one is uh, a problem is never solved, uh, listen properly, uh, on its own level, being complex, it must be understood in its total process. And so you must see the full movement, how you are conditioned into negativity, how you stir. Then you understand who you are, what you are, and how you function as a human being. Then only you can understand what is going on, understand not? If you observe and the observe the entity, the security is very strong, you always say, I have problem, understand not? The eye is so strong, no? I don't like this. How can the world be so unfair? How can the United States be so uh, aggressive? You know? All this comes from thought. If you don't observe the awareness behind, you cannot see the evil root, the selfishness behind, the delusion behind. Then how the anger come to be, the condition arising, dependent origination condition, you cannot see. Understand? Then the psychiatry stuck there. Understand? Then you think you exist. Then thought divide. Thought is limited. Thought create what? Words, concept, and idea to divide and delude. Then conflict, misunderstanding, and war arise. Jealousy, hatred, fear, everything arise because of thought. Because that is why thought is limited. Thought divide and create suffering and problem. So you must understand thought. Then when you see that thought is limited, it cannot let you develop wisdom. It can accumulate memory as what? Knowledge, isn't it? What else can the thought be? Do. Because everything that you put into the content of consciousness is a memory, isn't it? Memory is the past. You understand? Or? Whatever you accumulate is something earlier on. Right? So, Krishna would say that memory, the past, is like the dead leaf. You know what is a dead leaf or not? Already decayed, dry up right here. How can this one understand the present moment? How can this one understand life which is in the present moment, state of flux, which is never of the past? And the past is never a reality. That's why you cling onto the past. 
the thought project develop fear, worry, anxiety, sorrow, lamentation, and all those things, including the scars of memory. You see, all these are the conditioning that you develop when you accumulate. That's why when you understand thought, you know thought is capable of all this. What must you do? Huh? What must you do? You must have the wisdom. The one I eat ran off. <laughs> now my other try to look like one small pill, uh, sweet and give me. Where was I? You must try to. Oh, about thought, eh? Uh, what do you do about so what must you do? You must learn how to develop the wisdom to use thought. Understand or not? Means thought create all these things, limited, create words, concept, and idea to divide and cause conflict. You still want to think uh, and allow this to continue to multiply and create suffering and misery to the whole planet and the world. That's why I used to tell you all what, like J. Krishnamurti came to know. He said, thought is mechanical. Thought, like I tell you, is capable of only knowledge and that's all, mechanical thing. Psychological thing, don't use thought. You understand not? Thought is useful. Why? Because you need to remember who you are, that's not, where you live. Who your wife is or your husband is, who are your children? When old age got dementia, how? Huh? You cannot recognize it. Eh? It's like the thought got no use in it. Understand? Eh? So what happened is you must understand how you sign your check. Understand? Eh? Where are your wealth? Where are your property? Also, all these are mechanical things, which is a fact that society demands that you need to remember. Understand? But this has got no psychological impact on understand. Understand? When it comes to psychological problem and memory, if you accumulate, you die. Why? Psychological means what? Emotion. Understand? And before you become enlightened, what are your emotions? Uh, all the things we write on. Right? Fear, worry, anxiety, sorrow, lamentation, despair, and all the nonsense. Including your phobia, uh, your scars of memory. Everything that you have there. These are psychological memory. Why do you want to remember psychological memory that bring about remorse? Understand? Right? Fear, anxiety, sorrow. You recall all the child abuse, all the suffering and misery that you go through. Huh? Immediately that thought, huh? something trigger the phobia arises. And so the insecurity arises. So psychological memory is use thought. Thought create the movement. And so, huh? so thought project into the future. Before it happened, it tell you, hey, die already. You got cancer. Okay? Terminal. Stage 4. Then ask doctor 3 months or 6 months. What happened? When you project that thought. When you cannot see what is. You cannot accept the reality of the moment. You panic in it. Intense fear in it. That's how living beings get into trouble. So thought has its purpose. Understand now? It's right place for us to study science. We need thought, understand, huh? for academic, for knowledge, that like, you know, want to travel, huh? apply visa, all those things. You, you need thought to understand all this. Yeah? Then for me to share, I need to use thought, understand, huh? for me to exist, I need to use thought. Otherwise, the senses, how to communicate, understand. Huh? Like, you don't have this ability to speak. How you communicate? Uh, sign language, uh, they come out here. Yeah. <laughs> but how many people understand sign language? Only those who teach and study it and got problem one, they go and learn it. Yeah. Normal people won't learn it. Yeah. 
so your senses are very important when you are deaf you cannot hear you got problem when you are blind you cannot see you got problem that's all so if you don't allow psychological problem to be accumulated in your memory then you got no problem that's why krishna muti say it must be understood it is totality to try to solve a problem on only one level which is physical and psychological you die already understand not? me you go and think about it understand not? you think thinking can help you to develop the wisdom to free no way your thought is egoic it has not developed the wisdom unless you become enlightened you have the dhamma then what happened all the thought you use are right thought understand not? All the thought you arise are without the evil root, understand now? Like all the virtue, understand now? Contentment, generosity. These are also thought. These are also something to do with virtue, understand now? Your state of mind. But these are not negativity or state of mind. Means not the problematic thought, understand now? So when it comes to psychological memory, you have to be very careful. Yeah, it create problem so leads to further conflict and confusion so you cannot solve a problem on only one level means physical or psychological leading to further conflict and confusion for the resolution of a problem there must be read the word awareness. ah this awareness this passive or choiceless alertness understand which review it's total process and now the teacher Samupada that the Buddha, the Buddha talk about understand now how Abhijya Pajya Sankara Sankara Pajya Vinaya that how you develop the craving grasping clinging becoming and you take birth exactly the same understand now why can't you understand it so that time when I want to teach you know how many patients are Huh. I have to explain and explain and explain. That song new, this is important. That's why you read this. I don't know how many times you ask him. Yeah. So now I pass to Manya. Huh? Uh, Manya. Yeah. 5.3.1 What is silent? Can you all understand this daily code? What is silent? Not just don't talk. Silent. Here means no chattering. Completely no mental chattering and verbalization. No mental chattering, verbalization means no thought. That's what awareness is. But sometimes when you are silent, it doesn't mean you are aware because you can be doing a disciplined attention. You silent your mind like no thought, but you have a thought inside there that discipline you while saying, I must be mindful then you are no longer mindful or aware. That's why don't try to be mindful because the trying is by the thought, but instead just maintain silence. 5.3.2 What is awareness? The moment you are silent, you are already aware. So why do you want to be aware or try to be aware? During one of the recorded Satipatthana Sutta workshop, I heard this funny question that they asked, Who is aware and aware of what? If you inquire this way, then you will get caught because you thought awareness is a knowing. That's why you will ask who is aware and aware of what. Very logical, isn't it? But because most people's Sakaya Diti or self-delusion is so strong, so how can they be aware? The thought always wants to be aware via verbalization. That's why it is focus. It is a focused attention. Focused attention means the thought wants to be aware. The thought is still active behind the awareness. So how can it be aware? Understand or not? The thought is trying to be silent, to be aware of what it wants to be aware. So the moment you want to be aware of that thing, you are no longer aware. So now you understand why I told Bing Lima that one is still the thought behind. You remember? She said, I aware this, I aware this, then I find it better. Because that thought is 
still interpreting all this and that but it's a good try we are at least she determined to be aware via the thought and as I know he reminds himself I must be aware I must be aware who is the I the thought reminding him no I must be aware but you're supposed to completely relax let things be and maintain awareness and as I know. don't interfere and then the awareness come and as I know. but when you try to be aware when I say determined to aware means you don't try to be aware. No. You determine through what? Through the understanding that you must develop this awareness. So what is the instruction or the advice? For support, understand now? Ah, follow! Why you still want to practice awareness? Try to be aware. You understand now? Nobody inside there. But the thought create the ego. Thoughts say, I must develop the understanding, that I must meditate, that I must develop the mindfulness. So, thought try to be mindful, like so he came to know. Not natural. Understand? Huh? When you use thought to try to be mindful, are you natural? Like walking, standing, 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 intending to walk, intending to walk, huh? lifting, lifting. When you verbalize and label like that, huh? and do all the funny activity yeah, it's not natural that's why last time the other lady i told you went into a retreat morning go in after a checkup where he said it's like a zombie she almost collapsed in the meditation hall because he finds it so unnatural she cannot do so don't try to be my way practicing my phone wow all the instructions all the noting and all the even they later on say they know they are wrong they cannot note you know what they do or not? They say they don't verbalize. But the thought is actively verbalizing uh, without you knowing. Uh, I say I don't use word already. I just do. And who is doing? Again, the thought is behind the movement. So you are not relaxed. You are not within the moment. You try to be in that state, which is impossible when thought is active. Where sati is before the knowing. Or Krishna would be silent. Understand? Huh? Silent and choiceless observation of what is the reality. So these are people who have the understanding. They may use different words. But the meaning is the same. You have the same awareness and you understand what he say. Okay? Uh. Hmm. Okay. Uh, continue, Amanyan. Uh, 5.3.3 Choiceless, not making any choices or decisions. Awareness is just silent. Then choiceless means you don't try to make a choice. There is no decision of what you are aware of. Like the Buddha saying, in the seeing there is only the seeing consciousness and there is no one to see as yet. It is just the consciousness, just like the physics experiment. Upon contact, the light bulb lights up which means the consciousness just arises naturally. Can't you just be aware of the consciousness, the pure consciousness, before you input the content of consciousness? The trouble with you is, you are so fast and wire memory, you already label it as a flower, book, etc. because of your conditioned thinking. That's why you cannot see. In order to see, you must have this ability to be silent and you must have sati and samadhi. Otherwise, these aggregates of mind, they will arise very fast. The mind stir and they come up very fast and you cannot do anything about it. So now clear, huh? all this. Uh, okay, continue. Yeah. So that's why when you read J. Krishnamurti's quote, sati is awareness, and what is awareness? J. Krishnamurti said, Awareness is the silent and choiceless observation of what is. What is, is the reality before the labeling, that actual thing. So don't try to go and develop a duality to react to what you see or observe. That's why it is just a choiceless observation of the reality of what is. And what is means the isness of thing or the reality. Isness is suchness. That's why the Buddha is called the Tathagata, who is an expert in Tathata 
and tathata is suchness. So the choiceless observation of what is, is observing the isness of things and it's just the silent awareness of that of the reality within the moment. Uh, or seeing things as they are, without interpretation, without any uh, uh, interference by the thought, the memory, uh, or your conditioning, habitual, that, that one doesn't come in. Then you see things as they are, no? then you can see the Paticca Samupada. Otherwise, uh, your memory come in. Uh, Oh, just now I got angry. Why I got angry? Ah? Because you got no awareness. And then you try to find answer to what? To internet. You go and search. Why is a person angry? And then they tell you what? True thought again, describe to you how he get angry. Uh, so, uh, right? But they don't know the first noble true reality where you cannot get what you want. You know what they tell you? Yeah, the boss taro him. Lah. That's why he get angry. Yeah. Uh, uh, the parents whack him. La. So all these, uh, they are not seeing the reality, the truth behind. You know. The reality is, you cannot accept what is. Understand, no? When things don't go your way, you become bosong, unhappy, you react, you stop. Means not able to accept the reality of the moment. Understand, no? But they give you all sorts of mundane type of solution or, or reasoning or explanation. You see or not? That's why you look at the eight reality, uh, the Buddha are very wise. Uh. When you cannot get what you want, when things don't go your way, when expectation in life is not met, suffer. Lah. Then this one can be elaborated, no? expanded. No? So when people taro you, means what? You angry, right? Because your thought don't agree. Right? How can you do that to me? Yeah, la, you are my boss. You're very great. Right? <laughs> so all this is not seeing the essence, understand? Because you yourself reacted to what happened. You cannot be at peace it's because you don't have the wisdom to observe and doesn't understand what is happening. It's like karma. This time you blame. Why my husband did that to me? Last time you did that to other people, you never have this complain or you never say it's right or wrong. Understand or not? So when it comes to nature's law, spiritual law of karma, if you look at the present or what you are exposed to, you cannot understand what. But this law is conditioning. Understand or not? You reap what you sow. You are what you are. You are born of your karma. Add to your karma. So this type of understanding which is spiritual Without the awareness, you cannot witness, you cannot investigate, you cannot like uh, prove that it's, it's the nature's law. But scientists, scientific law, they can prove, understand or not? That's why they progress. So the Buddha realized the spiritual law over perfection, over long period of eons and eons, and because of that, he is a Samasa Buddha. Then he know. Then he said, you don't have to believe him. Because this Dhamma that he realized is Akaliko, Sanditiko, Ehipasiko, invite you to come and investigate. And it's then not to investigate. You can disbelieve karma. But when things entangle, finally the outcome is karma. That's why when I know how to apply the teaching from my past life, I teach you how to resolve it through the Dhamma way. By what? Asking for forgiveness, repentance. Become coming, break the obstruction. Then, follow the advice of the Buddha not to commit negativity for causes and conditions to make you more reasonable, uh, more miserable, not reasonable, uh, miserable. Then the last one is, uh, evoke power of merit. After that only you got power of merit. But your Kaya Mita, no need to start doing that. Uh, so, uh, you already cultivating the advice of the Buddha when you already have the understanding of the Dhamma. Means your merit, uh, like this retreat, uh, spiritual treasure everywhere, uh, you already, uh, what they say, chop until no time to pick. Uh, you know? <laughs> you know, every moment also, wow, 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 all coming in. Uh, but last time you don't know that these are spiritual treasure. You pine say, the thought is pine say. They are not speak. Oh, people speak, then you follow. Uh, 
you always follow one. Huh? That's why the highest merit is what? Asangalika. What is it? Spontaneous, not prompted. Huh? This one look for people. Oh, can huh? Jin Hao Sadhu first. I follow. That type of merits are huh? tinted already. Huh? Follow one. Huh? Not spontaneous. So what is the highest merit? So monasa sahagatam. Like Malay word, huh? Sumo masa happy. Understand? Uh, joy. Before you do, when you do, after you do, you still happy, you still joy. So Soma Nasa Sahagatam. Then Nyana Sampai Yutang. Nyana is what? Ha, ah, you do with wisdom. Then Asam Kalika. Understand? Uh, ah, unprompted, spontaneous. That's why you need so manasikara. Need people to prompt you or not? Spontaneous, it come up. You need people to prompt you, uh, means they say what now? Hey, you forgot the idea, Brother Tio say. Ah, like that. Uh. Oh, Brother Tio say, let things be. Uh. Then you interpret me wrongly. You know? Hey, you keep both for what? Brother Tio say, let things be. You know? Your wife scold you, let things be. La. Don't do anything. La. My meaning is not like that. No? But you quote me correctly. You know? Understand? No? So this is how, with awareness, with understanding, you break free. Can I follow? Okay, uh, continue. 5.3.4 Listening attentively without thought. Sister Monica, in one of my meditation on Thursday, correct me if I am wrong, whether that is sati or not, I could hear the talk that you were giving and I know that there were brothers and sisters around me, but there was this joy in me. I wasn't thinking and I know that it was after the whole thing that I started to recollect back. I was so joyful. I know that there was Brother Theo talking and there were people around, but just that and then nothing else. This is the real Sati. She really in the state of Sati awareness. That's why she can describe all this. But this one only he recall after she come out. You look at my answer. Brother Theo answered, Okay, Sadhu. Because when you listen attentively, there is no interference from your thought, from your opinions, your views, your conditioning, etc. You know this is what? Memory. Understand or not? Understand or not? Yes. Ah, then you don't comment means what? Ah, you don't interfere. Understand or not? You don't go and stir and react and use your memory again, your views, opinion, conditioning habitual tendency, belief system, to do all those nonsense. You just listen, listen attentively. It means you just aware. Then the senses, like Sui say, heighten. Understand or not? Because you are not lost in thought, not clouded. Listen means that full listening. You know, that organ is pure listening. That is the art of listening. You don't know how you listen. You think you worry. You go song inside there. What type of listening is that? Then you compare. This one correct? Ah? Ah, why my teacher teach different? This teacher teach like that. Are you listening? You are already commenting, chattering and verbalizing inside. This one, Sankara Sanya. Wow. So strong inside. Ah. Then later, ah, comment. Ah, like in the school, you remember? If the teacher, they all play fun. They go and put something behind him. He doesn't know. Ah. So as he teach, yeah, yeah, nobody paying attention, everybody laughing. Oh, oh, because they put a awkward at the back. Understand? So this is what is happening. So when you are not attentive, means you get excited over what happened. You know? Then all the students, you cannot blame them. Yeah, that time you still student. Oh, so everybody don't want to tell the teacher. Until the teacher get hold of one fellow. What are you laughing? Why you laugh? Oh, then he said, <laughs> Before that, that guy was staying the thing back. Then by the time the teacher found out, uh, you know how angry he is. Uh. The whole class uh, disciplined detention. Cannot go to breakfast and all those things. And no, no break. Uh. You call break and uh, you go for a recess. Uh, uh, break. Cannot go to toilet or those time. Uh. Uh, punishment. Uh. Uh, or this way teacher call, come. This guy did this. Uh, so, public gaining. Who gain? Headmaster gain. And I said, all this is what 
the phenomenal world is all about. When you don't have understanding, when you are not aware, you get entangled. That's how suffering come to be. Good. Many are continue. You just listen attentively, without any reaction. That's what choiceless awareness is all about. But the moment you perceive or the mind cognize, there's already the mind coming out of sati. But in her case, she is very good because she did not allow it to continue to think, which means there is awareness. Then there is a perception of Brother Tio talking, all the vibration, etc. Just goes in. Then, if he wants to understand, she can understand. But she did not arise any thought to interfere, which means there is no will, opinion, or conditioning coming out of it. Just an open mind that listens. No right, no wrong. That's how I investigate with the silent mind to find out whether it is the truth or not. When I can listen attentively without thoughts, which means I have very good sati or awareness, then this sati can do dharma investigation. Ah, when you do dharma investigation, that is what the Buddha meant by uh, no, no, Dhamma Vichaya is correct. The, the one salutation, Ehi Pakseko, understand? Oh, you invited to investigate. It will stand up to invest. So, this is what you must do. In the awareness, observe choices. Don't interfere. Then, this is Dhamma investigation, understand? Dhamma investigation is not thinking, no, understand? No? The awareness, aware, no? then find out, no. This is how it happened. The reality is like that. The movement with your mindfulness, you can see. Your views, opinion, career, the memory, then this one stir. Then the five agree or form your mind get into trouble. Then the sakayaditi condition you to believe you exist, you bosong, you afflicted. And all these are related to you. This is really sakayaditi, delusion. Okay? Yeah, when you are continuing. 5.3.5 Sakaya Diti, Self Delusion and the Three Evil Roots. I will go on with the JK's quote, then you will understand better. The quote said, Awareness is the silent and choiceless observation of what is. Then it goes on to say, Problems will always exist where the activities of the self are dominant. Can you all understand this statement? What are the activities of the self? What is self? Self is ego, the personality, the I and the me. And this egoic mind is your thought or the five mental aggregates. When there is Sakaya Diti or self delusion, then this thought becomes egoic, which means the thought will have selfishness, emotion, doubt and fear, etc. And they are part of the three evil roots of greed, hatred and delusion. So it is exactly like what the Buddha taught. Problems will always exist where the activities of the self, conditioned by the self-delusion, are dominant, or when the three evil roots are there. Because when there is this self-delusion to grasp at the form and mind, thinking that it is you, whether it is the human being or the mental or the mental five aggregates of Rupa, Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, and Vinyana, then suffering will arise. Any of these five aggregates of form and mind, if you grasp and cling through self delusion, thinking that feeling is you, that all these external forms you see, you can own and possess them, and thinking that all of the perce perceptions that you perceive and label are real, also can be owned, can be possessed including all of the views and opinions that you are holding on to, plus all of the phenomena and things that you become conscious of, you can grasp and cling on to them while giving them meaning. Then suffering will follow you. Hence, this reason, hence the reason why the Buddha said in his first Noble Truth final summary, in short, the five grasping aggregates or Upadana Kanda are Dukkha. So the teaching is exactly the same, because the thought, which is the five mental aggregates, if it grabs onto them as the me and the I, via self-delusion, 
then suffering will arise or like what J Krishnamurti said via his daily quote so problems will always exist where the activities of the self which is self delusion are dominant to be aware which are and which are not the activities of the self needs constant vigilance 5.3.6 be constantly aware and heedful constant vigilance here means constantly aware and heedful that is when the evil roots are there when the self is there when the selfishness the emotional negativities the fear and the manifestation of the mental ego are there you have to be aware that's what vigilance means the buddha used the words constantly aware which is the same as vigilance that's why in certain books heedfulness is also translated as vigilance so it is only when you are constantly aware only then you can do something about it otherwise you cannot because the mind is so fast 5.3.7 vigilance or awareness is not discipline or focus attention then what did krishna munti say this vigilance is not a discipline attention just like what i had shared with you all earlier on how do you discipline and do you know what discipline is just like in the military full discipline you must do this you must do that you must know this and you must know that you must meditate like that and all these are discipline attention or focus attention do you understand but awareness has nothing to do with the thought who discipline the thought wants to discipline the thought wants to be aware the thought wants to maintain attention and the worst is the thought wants to meditate and what happens when the meditator which is the thought is so actively meditating you are no longer aware because you are verbalizing while the thought now you can laugh but last time you just follow instructions and do without understanding you are just being gullible this vigilance is not a disciplined attention because once the thought is active then you are no longer in sati already for sati is awareness or the silence before the thinking or knowing since vigilance or sati is an extensive awareness which is choiceless as opposed to disciplined attention which is a thought base hence the reason why j krishna muti go on to say that disciplined attention gives strength to the self this is because when the user of thought thought is deluded then thought will be egoic egoic means self centered so when you try to discipline and when you try to meditate with the thought or when you try to be aware it is already a disciplined attention already because the trying is by the thought and when thought is there you give it mental energy and this will strengthen the self the ego which is the personality then what happen you can no longer see things as they are because you are preoccupied with the doing while the thoughts hence you lack clarity whereas awareness on the other hand is not self induced and there is no body inside there to be aware it is just an awareness nature which is the essence of the mind the silent mind which is just aware a general spacious or specific phenomenon awareness before the knowing or labeling via thoughts or the aggregates of mind 5.3.8 meaning of what is awareness or sati is the silent and choiceless observation of what is what is is suchness the isness of thing the reality or the truth not a concept not an ideal not what you perceive to be but just what is that reality silence means mentally silent not just you don't talk then choiceless awareness means no views no opinions and no judgment etc 
you don't go and decide and you don't go and discriminate you don't go and create dualities out of nothing so awareness is the silent and choiceless observation of the truth or the reality which is the same as when you see things as they are it means the truth which is also what is or the isness of things 5.3.9 self delusion and seeing things as they are then j krishna muti said problems will always exist when the activities of the self are dominant self as you know is your akta your self delusion your misconception that condition you to cling on to these five aggregates of form and mind both aspects the first aspect of it is as a human being we all have a physical body or form first aggregate then we all have a mind which can feel perceive think and become conscious the other four mental aggregates combining them we have the first aspect of the five aggregates of form and mind as the human being or a living being the second aspect is the five mental aggregates of form and mind that arise with every moment of sense door consciousness when you attach and cling there is this ego or personality that you create and that is what krishna muti call the self the moment you have this ego in mind or the sense of self created then it is capable of selfishness emotional and negativities and fear through delusion hence conditioning the three evil roots to arise and that's why j krishna muti also said the same wire is called that problems will always exist when the activities of the self which is the great mind or self delusion are dominant then he said in order to be aware which are and which are not the activities of the self you need constant vigilance and this vigilance is not a disciplined attention disciplined attention means regimented attention which means through the thought you want to be aware and through the thought you want to discipline yourself like this is how you should meditate and this is how you should know this is how you should do things all these are discipline or focus attention and not a silent general awareness so when you understand that vigilance is not a discipline attention but an extensive awareness which is choiceless then you can develop the understanding of what sati or awareness is then krishna muti goes on to say this discipline attention gives strength to the self because the thought which is egoic is involved so when you try to discipline and meditate with the thought or when you try to be aware who is trying the thought is trying and when the thought is there you give energy to it and it will strengthen the self or the ego then what happen you become more deluded and heedless whereas awareness on the other hand is not self induced and there is no body inside there to be aware it is just an awareness nature an essence of mind which is just aware and ever mindful within it just like inquiring who is aware of the silence of nature in the middle of the night when there is no more vibration which means no more hearing consciousness but yet there is still a nature within you that can be aware of that silence that stillness the mind that doesn't ch- chatter anymore because there is no more thought and is not a condition arising consciousness so who is aware of that silence it is just the essence of mind that is aware of silence and that is your true nature your true mind but you seldom or hardly touches it even when you touch it momentarily it is so fast and you couldn't recognize it for most of you you only know thoughts 
that is the only instrument you have been using rampantly to live life since birth, and that is why you have a lot of problem and suffering. And because of that, you cannot develop the ability to be aware. It is because when your thoughts are so rampantly proliferating, you hardly got any space between thoughts to experience the silence. So pay attention to this sentence, uh, space between thought, okay? Huh? Ah, you know why or not? When you don't have space between thought means what? Constantly you think a lot. <laughs> when you are not thinking, there is space. Eh? So space is energy, yes, uh, your awareness energy. When you got no space, your brain is cluttered with thought, and that's all. Now. And they are all egoic, deluded, and that's all. Now. With the evil root, with all the psychological memory that you accumulate and cling on to, hold on to, how not to get into trouble, and that's all. Now. How not to have all this uh, suffering, misery, affliction, go into depression and all things, and that's all. Now. Huh. So when you start to understand, that's why after I share this, uh, a lot of the Kayamita laugh at that time. Because at that time cannot see. They do thought based and still not hear, not say. <laughs> okay, continue. Very good. 5.3.10 The space between thoughts. Can you remember? The space between thoughts, which we discussed at our recently concluded Camera Highlands retreat. Again, it's Cameron Highland Retreat. So now, you listen. When you think continuously, until you have no more space between thoughts, hence there is no more clarity of mind to be aware. Because you are so preoccupied with the thoughts, and this space between thoughts, which is very important, is not there. Between two thoughts, first and the second thought, there is this space in between. When you have this space, you can then realize that this space is silence, peace and tranquility, leading to stillness. When you are without thoughts, this is what you will experience. This space between thoughts can only be realized by the true cultivator of the way. And they are so different because this is full living. And most of the time, you are constantly aware and ever mindful. So this is the part. If you cannot understand, because you never meditate until your mind is so quiet and so still, then you can never understand what sati is. For sati can only be understood when you had realized it. The moment the form and mind realize it, you will know what sati is. No need any words or explanation. So the space between thoughts is very important. Reason why J. Krishnamurti said, Awareness on the other hand is not self-induced, nor it is the outcome of a practice. Who practice? The thought practice meditation. That's why it is diff different. Because the real sati is without thought. Do you understand? So. Very clear, yeah. So earlier on here, when I describe, you can then realize page two to four, uh, last few sentences. Uh, you can then realize this space between thought. So what is this space? This space is silent, peaceful, and tranquil, or tranquility leading to stillness. And what is this? Huh? Your true mind, eh? Your true mind. Is without thought, you are aware. That is your awareness. That is your, your true mind is tranquil, still. Nothing inside there, understand? No? That's why when you are able to completely silent, then this clarity, tranquility, stillness, they will arise. Understand? No? And this is your true mind. That's why this awareness nature is aware. This one is not a big, no. You cannot come out and live life, no. You cannot talk, no. No word, no concept, nothing, no. But this one has a lot of energy. 
awareness space which is the higher intelligence that create thought understand thought is a byproduct from there when you shrink the awareness spatial then you input the content that's why thought arise and this is limited understand not? because it is only functioning within that space which is the small space you perceive with the content inside outside of it you cannot be aware like i say man can only do one thing at a time when you are lost in thought you cannot be aware so if your thought continuously proliferate how can you be aware where you are so preoccupied with the sankara sanya no? your reaction your fear your phobia your whatever excitement and all that but that one is the one that actually imprison you prevent you from having the awareness to understand what is going on it's just like the other example last time i used to give when you are at the ground level of Brinjang town let's say yeah? when you are standing there then you see a lot of car a lot of traffic a lot of human beings like, walking around with it you are lost inside there isn't it? because you don't have the energy or the horizon to see what is going on as well let's say you go to a higher place like our san pao si then you look down what do you see you see all the movement on the channel then when the car or the traffic or the ship from one direction turning that side then the incoming direction there is another vehicle on collision course. you know with that correct or not? you say see now going on collision but those fellow down there don't know on the channel the driver here also don't know there also people on the ground also know, until bam and then, you know, and then what is happening you know, everybody now got video camera you know, instead of helping people you know, take photo first and then, you know. so the energy when you are aware means you are spatial where you are at higher energy level and then, you know, with the clarity to look down that's why when you have awareness to observe everything like slow motion and you know, then you can understand why living being like ants eh? busy hectic eh? everything uh, like, like like stressful in a, a state of what urgency like like no time one and so that everything also running around but of course you can also see tourists enjoying themselves lah, and so that. but they are also at the same level you know? even a pickpocket nearby also he don't know and so that. but you up there you can see oh, hey the pickpocket doing all this Ah, still so many already. you can see that's why sometimes uh, you say you would dream uh, you got message from up there uh. you know what is up there uh. <laughs> what is up there <laughs> heavenly being uh, that's not deva. sometimes this deva may be related to you so he want to help you but he cannot contact you, you know, because you don't have awareness and all those ability uh. so what he come come into your dream and so sometimes give you a sign uh, then you say wow my sixth sense very accurate oh. actually your friend up there help you and uh, he saw already uh, the conditioning and uh, you are going to get into trouble uh. that's why sometimes they say don't go up that plane and uh, so we got on collision call they're up there they can see and uh, they can understand so all this is what nature is existence is lively so when your energy level which is your mindfulness awareness it has higher intelligence and it's pure awareness which is way beyond thought that's why it is the nature that is responsible for the arising of the mandema the thinking the thought the mandema is a product of that nature that's why that nature awareness can see thought but thought cannot see awareness just like thought is the one that is responsible for the creation of all these external form so thought can see form form cannot see thought understand? we are higher intelligent but this is a product of thought all of the universe like the surangama sutta say the continent the planet the the form that you see within the phenomenal world 
they are the product of thought. Right? Their thought is energy. Right? And now the scientists know all these elements, solid form, they are trapped energy. You understand now? Einstein's special uh, equation. What is that equation? Ah, e equals to mong cha cha. Sure, sure, can remember. Understand now? Energy is equals to m c square. M c square. No, you know what is c? Speed of light. No. And you know how fast is speed of light? The square of it. No, your mass times the square of the speed of light. How much energy release? Oh. That's why they have nuclear bomb and all those things. No? Because of this understanding. And this is energy. Thought is energy, right? Consciousness. Trap energy. <laughs> then you go away. That's why they go and create all those things, the scientists. If they have Dhamma, they will create all this. Understand? Well, they know how to use thought. But all this selfish, huh? got different reason one that's why they help them to do research and when you're successful you're very well paid right? but the consequence of it how he destroy humanity and uh, whatever environment you don't care right? so because of all this our planet our world is having problem that's why everywhere having problem uh, but the consciousness actually there is some hope. My nature can feel we are actually progressing, but very slow. Not enough of the numbers that have the Dhamma. If you have the one percent have Dhamma, the whole thing reverse. Yeah. All the thought based on all God, all awareness based on come up. Understand? Not? When science progress means what? A lot of knowledge, thought-based activity, and that's all. That's why our emphasis for the last few decades is what all the scientific thing, and that's all. All the gazette that you come to uh, play around and like like very impressive, and very interesting is what all technology, and that's all. Scientific, thought-based, but spiritual. How many can you see? A lot claim to be spiritual, understand? but how many has the real understanding, the awareness based on? I can tell you, among all the so-called spiritual people, uh, no need to say Buddhists, 99% uh, is thought-based. You understand? Uh? Among all these practitioners, at least 99 or 99.99999 uh, are thought-based. Awareness based is very difficult to find. Okay? Yeah. Ah, so you should thank your own good karma huh? when you can receive this and I saw quite a number of you can lie down and didn't snow already. It's a good sign. Huh? Uh, you can lie down, relax, maintain awareness. But maybe the awareness have not stable. But some already very stable. They are doing it already. So don't worry. As long as you have faith, sincerity, persevere or diligence, understand not? The way will be there. The path will be there. Then Dhamma will unfold. Then everywhere you walk on that path, uh, spiritual treasure everywhere, you know. Evil power of Maurice and now it will take you to the destination of you understand? No? So worry, someone worry, worry, what if I don't make it this window or this? for what? That one is the thought tell you understand. No? Trust your nature. Sincerely cultivate, then take care of karma, follow the advice of the Buddha. That is more important, eh? like Jin Hao come to know. Why go and strive and compete and get yourself killed inside here? Understand? You ask him and see. He, because of coming eh, last time, eh, he met the lawyer, no, the corporate lawyer, no, terrible guy. You know. He came to my house, he presented to so yanti, eh? This type of people also I have to confront. Uh, you ask him. If he got time, maybe let him share. Uh, then after that, the problem resolved. Yeah, I teach him how to go about uh, apply number A for bar, ask for forgive. Count it. Finally, the lawyer also end up 
quite friendly yeah? uh, uh, but because he got his interest mad understand uh, he asked for a big cut understand uh, so all this is what existence is all about okay uh, continue 5.3.11 training the heedless or mundane mind you can train your mind because it is heedless so train the heedless mind the mundane mind then when that one sees or is no longer active then the nature comes out or shine forth the nature don't practice you don't try to practice to be aware because your true mind or your true nature they are already aware and you only need to be silent then it will manifest because the nature is awareness itself so why must you practice to be aware what you already have within your nature you don't have to train or practice to get it isn't it when you don't have then you have to train to have you have to practice just like the mundane mind which is heedless thinks a lot restless with all the emotions and delusion that one you need to train that's why you only train the mundane mind but to develop sati and mindfulness you don't go and practice can so you can understand? you understand eh? It's like you try to teach the fish how to swim, no? That's not, no? The, the fish by nature huh, come out, huh? the moment it's born, I really know how to swim. You want to teach the fish how to swim. That's not, no? Your awareness nature already aware, you want to practice awareness. So who practice? But the thought that cloud you and delude you, practice. You understand now? What is already there, you need to practice man. You are that nature with the awareness. But the trouble with living being is you don't know you have that. Understand or not? So what happened? Because the only instrument you know is the thought. I don't know. You use the thought to try to understand and practice to realize that. Understand or not? It's just like the analogy that one of my teacher or guide gave it to us. You, you know what he said or not? He said, uh, the analogy is, uh, there was a wise man, no? he really enlightened, you know? very wise. So, he actually gave a beggar, you know? huh? a beggar, you know? one piece of gem, you know? could be a triple gem, you know? but you have to go and understand it. Huh? But the beggar doesn't know that it's a gem. You know, you know beggars, most important thing is what? food immediately, uh, food and shelter. Uh. So he take that one, we got coming obstruction, don't have any understanding. He look at it, to him it's a stone, understand? Uh, he's a stupid fellow, I want food, he gave me stone. <laughs> Throw away. Uh, a lot of living beings like that. Uh. Enlightened being, great being, the nature everywhere. But, there is a lot of cultivator. You go Utaisa, a lot of story. People cannot recognize Manjusi Bodhisattva. Huh? Well, he came as a beggar. He liked to come as a beggar. You remember she? He met the beggar. Later on, they told him very likely he's Manjusi. And so, so don't think beggar are beggar. No, well, you look at the form. That's all. No? You don't have the awareness to understand. That's why they say, Zhao Bo. You know what is the meaning now? Huh? The country. In English, how to put it? Uh? Our dialect is very good. Uh? Zhao Bo. Uh? Uh, run away luck. Uh? <laughs> or precious thing. Uh? <laughs> Means actually, that precious opportunity or whatever actually come by. You know? But you did see. You know? So, you cannot receive them. Like treasure everywhere along the path. You never understand them. You think it's huh? all this. Ayo. What for? Rejoice for what? Understand? <laughs> no? Listen to Dhamma for what? I myself stay at home. Karuke. Understand? No? Actually, all these are gem. No? Even you go and tell them, no? hey, come la, attend Dhamma la. Ah, yeah, where I got time, la, my girlfriend is waiting. La. Uh, appointment here and there. Oh, I got this, I got that. Why? 
because they don't recognize the treasure and uh, the gem. Not so, enough suffering. Uh, what? Not, not enough suffering. Uh, not enough suffering. <laughs> so we say uh, correct. Uh, because still enjoying life, uh, may chung chong, uh, Cantonese say, heaven cannot short. Uh, when you cannot short already, uh, then you worry, uh, you can die. Uh. How come blood keep on oozing out? Wow, so much pain. Send you to hospital. Uh, then what happened? Emergency. I see you. Then the bill all go out, uh, panic. Uh. But before kena that thing, uh, well, you enjoy the late night also, never mind, go out. Uh. Then like very great, very great, argue with people, fight with people. Like you, 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 big time <laughs> gangster, that's all. But you met somebody more fierce than you are, huh? happy, huh? and that's all. Huh? So, like Sui said, uh, heaven experience and not suffering. That's why they don't recognize all this. When do you seek Dhamma? Spiritual. When you got big problem with that. Otherwise, people have uh, got no time for Dhamma or uh, as uh, uh. Then sometimes uh, they are coming obstruction, uh, they don't seek Dhamma, uh, they seek Bomo. Uh, uh, they seek the Lamo, uh, they seek all the Feng Shui below. Uh. You know, last time they are like that in past life, swing the people. Uh, hey, please, uh, don't quote me. Uh. After all the Feng Shui master all come out, they got their signs, uh, please, uh, don't go and interfere. Okay? So when you understand, then this thing becomes clear. Because if you don't give all this type of explanation, you cannot relate the Dhamma to life. Understand? No? To us, with the awareness and the Dhamma on the side, we see it so clear. No? That's why sometimes I look around, uh, right living, uh, people who have the condition, affinity, uh, they fatat, no? understand? No? Motinti, no? they didn't know it's treasure, but just because their goodness, uh, they pay respect, they offer uh, dana and all say. Don't know us one from outside one. Deliver thing, then they heard got retreat. They also want to partake. That's all right. Then the cunning and deluded one, uh, no time for all, all this one. Uh. But to them this is not important. Uh, yeah. This is for the bird, uh, that's all right. Not for them, uh, that's all right. Because they say they are human beings. Uh. So different Understanding will lead to different outcome. Yes, or not? Actually, all the spiritual wealth everywhere. No? You don't know how to pick and don't know how to give meaning and don't know how to actually make full use of the opportunity. So with all this sharing, hopefully you wake up no longer deluded and heedless. Then you will follow the advice of the Buddha. Strive on. Ah, we train your mind to have heedfulness, then only strive, no. Don't strive before the heedfulness come, no. If you talk based on that, you strive for what? Wasting time, understand? Develop the heedfulness, then go all out. What is go all out? Like I say, silent, understand? Ah, then you will make it, understand? Okay, my young, yeah. The Buddha taught you five ways to overcome unwholesome thoughts. And what is the third way? Just aware, right? Don't do anything. Then the mundane mind will return to its original state before the steering. And you will come to realize that the original state of mind before the steering is already aware and this awareness is the silence, peace, tranquility and the stillness. So you don't try to be aware. You only have to understand that the moment you don't think, this awareness is already there. It is in fact all the time there. But because you are clouded by thought, deluded by thought, actively chasing after thought, you cannot see and you cannot understand. Do you know why? Because you lack mindfulness or awareness. And the meditator, which is the thought, is so active. So how can there be silence? That's why the real meditation is just silent. But initially, you cannot be silent because the mundane mind has a lot of mental hindrances, a lot of delusion, sakaya diti. That's why it thinks a lot, because all of your conscious living since birth until now, you use thoughts, endlessly using thoughts. That's why they say the heedless thinks a lot. So now you understand, 
why most of you think a lot. It is only either at a retreat or if you had cultivated before in the past, then for a certain moment of your life, you may experience that silence. Then the moment you experience it, you will know the big difference between the heedless thinking mind and the heedful silent mind. That's why when you see the difference between the two, you will determine never to be heedless anymore because the heedful state is so beautiful, whereas the heedless state is so full of suffering, problems and delusion leading to all the fear, worry, sorrow, lamentation, anxiety and misery. All of the so-called problems of life and that's the reason why Krishnamurti say, problems will always exist when the activity of the self which is the ego is there. You can never be free. So now you understand why you must train your mind to have heedfulness. Because the difference between heedful living and heedless living is so obvious. Understand or not? It's your choice. If you choose to be heedless, then you are not the wise one. You know why or not? Dhammapada verse 22. Distinctly seeing this, the wise one intent on what? Ah, heedfulness. Then they rejoice in the ah, rhyme of the Arya. Then only you can become enlightened. Dhammapada was the two you know, so clear. You know. Then when you cultivate mindfulness awareness, you know the difference between heedful living and heat. Heedful means you are with your awareness, true mind, tranquil, still, clarity, and so on. No Sankara Sanya. No, all this suffering, misery, like what is described here. Understand? Huh? The heedful state is so beautiful, whereas the heedless state is so full of suffering, problem, and delusion leading to what? All the fear, worry, anxiety, sorrow, lamentation, and misery. And all of the so called problems of life. And that's the reason why Krishnamurti said, so. You still want to have all this in your mind state. Huh? Then go ahead and be heedless, understand? Huh? No need to trade, no need to be heedful. So your life, huh? you decide, you choose. No how to choose or not? Yes. Ah, you. <laughs> ah, so don't hear say yes, go back again for God. Uh, go back to the old way. Determine, understand? Huh? Then tomorrow we will share when you go back how to continue this training, understand? Or not? How to develop this? You need a stable daily religious routine to anchor you back to all this training. Then you will become successful. Means what? Diligent. Have faith, sincerity, walk. No need to know the outcome, understand? Or not? Sincere walk. When you have these three, what are the three? Faith, Faith sincerity, and ah, perseverance or diligence. The path will be there. Dhamma will unfold. And then you will realize and you will awaken. So simple. And so now. This three qualities so difficult. Man. Faith in the Buddha and his teaching so difficult. Man. I don't ask you to have faith in me. You know. Believe me. Buddha and his teaching. No. Then, Sincere also cannot. Ah, yeah. then good luck, tempo lah, persevere. That's all. Don't give up lah. Uh, what is dangerous? Is coming obstruction make you forget. Understand? Uh, you go back. You go back where? You go back to this one. Understand? Uh, the hua hua sujie. Understand? Ah, uh, where all the excitement, the fun. Uh, this one is the sensuality, right? They lure you, understand? Not? Then they condition you to grab, to cling, to hold, and to go all out, compete for all this type of thing. So, hua hua si jie, in English is what? Uh, flowery world doesn't re doesn't we have our hua is the sensuality one, uh, lure you one. Uh, 
So, uh, the English are uh, sensual and luring world. Uh, uh, because the level of sensuality, you know, is how high are. You think nowadays youngsters, uh, you ask them to go for Dharma class, uh, they listen to you. Uh. The level of sensuality is so high, you know, understand or not? Computer, IT, and all this got money, uh, you can indulge and all the food, uh, then girlfriend, boyfriend, then they tell me what, uh, nowadays, uh, girlfriend, boyfriend, uh, like taking breakfast, uh, or like change clothes, uh, understand? Because to them it's so common now, understand? Uh, but of course not all, uh, understand? Uh, but that is what society is. So when they are in that state, you think they got time for Dhamma class or not? Unless they get into trouble, or not? otherwise they will never look at it. Or not. They will tell you, hey, don't come and disturb me, I got no time. Oh. So you sometimes you cannot blame your younger generation, children or whoever. And so they are just the way they are. Where they choose to come this uh, era. But choose to come on not so bad, uh, like my daughter, my son, choose to come uh, They want to uh, force to come one. Uh. So how can you uh, advise him or say anything? Because they are coming, it's like that. That's why I said they are alive, let them live. Your duty is what? Right. Advice and guide. That's all not. Don't quarrel with them. They are alive, let them make the decision. You only advise. Uh. And then, you become beautiful. So what you should do is, uh, I teach you a trick. Uh. You tell them, don't worry, you want to live your life, go ahead. You want to enjoy it, go ahead. Because now you won't listen, uh, but you remind him. You get into trouble, you come and see mommy. Uh, 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 then uh, he will remember that one. Then like I told my younger brother, I said, you remember, if you don't catch out my parents, uh, don't go and do all those nonsense until they all like heart attack or what, uh, you are still my brother. Then when you have 10,000, come and see me. Huh, he come and see me. He remember that word. No? Gangster and all those things. No? Taikong area one also can turn around. No? So don't worry about them. Understand, no? Don't pamper them. That's the only thing. No? So, do your duty. Understand, no? If you can afford, need to support them, sacrifice for them, do. Well, in future, your parents will do the same thing for you. Understand, no? So all this is Dhamma. You reap what you sow. You are born of Kama A. That understanding is very important. No? You are born of Kama A, you are Kama condition and so forth. You are what you are. Because Kama decides everything. No? You don't have to take care of Kama. You somehow gong gong. Enjoy life here. Huh? You prefer Hua Hua Si Jie or take care of Kama. Huh? When you take care of Kama, here become wonderful existence. Understand or not? You come so beautiful with the understanding, like bulletproof, understand? no suffering. But yet, you understand life, you enjoy life. Now that the one, no. Very deluded, gong gong lai, gong gong toa, gong gong si, and how you die also, you don't know. Understand? Uh, Auntie Song, wow. <laughs> so when you Understand really, you really, wow, deluded, uh, stupid. Uh. But last time, how you live your life? Huh? Chasing after what? Your job, your career, money, understand? Uh, no time for Dhamma. But most of you all got past coming. That's why you know how to come to the Dhamma. Understand? Uh, you got affinity. Okay? Most people don't have that affinity, cannot. Very difficult. So count your own blessing. Thank your good karma. Huh? That yeah. you know how to sacrifice to come for this. Then now understand treasure everywhere. So your job is very easy, right? Pick and choose. Understand now? Then after that, all the treasure is your coming inheritance. Right? So, then all your understanding is your spiritual inheritance. So coming nature, spiritual nature taken care, you come here, no problem, understand? Life is wonderful, understand? 
here you realize the unconditioned dhamma and the conditioned dhamma means you realize the conditioned dhamma huh? you know how to live the unconditioned dhamma you realize through emptiness no reality that's why you cannot get hurt no suffering bulletproof how people shoot you also you won't die on you know, you got eternal life here can die or not huh this one is the true nature, original nature, all the time they want eternal one. Who die? And this fellow always die. Right? Segmented life. Huh? This fellow every time Zhong Chiang doesn't know how he Zhong Chiang. How he die also doesn't know. Uh, keep on roaming in samsara. Understand? And someone enjoy, you know. Huh? They aim, they come to be what? They, they aim for what? Their ambition. President, no, politician, no. because that type of career make a lot of money. No. No. So, thinking that very interesting, no. but when you become president, you get assassinated, no. like J.F. Kennedy. Huh? You think very fun. No. There are a lot of stress, no. but they all power crazy, no. they don't care. No. No. So, all these are examples for you to see. And make the appropriate decision. If you know all this already, why not you spend a bit of time, train yourself and develop this understanding, then develop the wisdom, then build up your karmic nature, spiritual nature. Then every life you come, whether you choose to come or you have to come, or sorry, including the yellow card, take the vow, huh? then make sure everything taken care of. Then every life you come, life is wonderful. Then. Like that, do one. Ah, you. Uh, you prefer. Ah, uh, yeah. Alicia, come. Share. Uh, brought you. Good uh, afternoon, uh, brought you, Mrs. Steel. Long time. I brought you, Chang Dao, the faith, sincerity, and perseverance. Uh, faith, uh, I can understand. 但是sincerity,我经过很久,我才明白。因为sincerity,听起来好像很容易,但是做起来它是非常的广。因为它的area很广。Correct。You know why or not? To be sincere is not easy. This one is a virtue or not? When you enter into a marriage contract, you sincere or not? Of course, uh, before the I do, uh, you should say I say, otherwise they don't want to marry you. Uh. No, I do. Uh, and so. But after you sign the contract early, you think easy to maintain that sincerity. Uh. That hua hua shi jie, uh, liu you, you know, tame you. You know, you know why it tame and liu or not? Then you say what? You go and blame uh, my secretary, tackle me, you know, what can I do? Uh, I'm also human. Uh. Uh, what? Uh, tissue and cell. No? I also got feeling. No? You go and justify like that. No? There are one case. No? The, fellow, the, the husband very rich. No? Want to marry another one. No? From star. No? Then he talk to the wife. No? I hope you understand. No? Allow me. No? Oh, the wife tapri uh, tahan. Depression. Then finally came and see me. For Singapore, no? oh. then how? I teach her lah. But she that time too cluttered, not easy to apply. But finally she came out. Yeah. But through her own way lah. Yeah. Otherwise not easy. Oh. Suicidal thought. Oh. We've got two children and all those things. So what I teach him is don't argue, resolve it amicably. Yeah. That's what he did. Oh. I said you hold the Ong Pai, uh. what is Ong Pai? Trump you know what? Uh, Trump card. Uh, very good. Thank you, English. You got two children, no? Their family very rich, no? No grandchildren, no? They sayang the grandchildren like po, no? no? Then you know what happened, no? yeah. The grandparents actually talked to the in law and I was saying, please resolve it. Because later on, they like, Ask me to go down, uh, help. Then when the in-law talk to me, they know, no, I say, Mr. Tio, Mr. Tio, we need you to help. Please explain to him. Because the decision is what? 
if you don't resolve it amicably and get this resolved, they are going to go to the court to take custodian of the grandchildren. Huh? huh? <laughs> so that will be the outcome now. But they're very fair. You know what they told the, the, the daughter-in-law? He said, you don't worry. That son was, the husband was the elder son. No? He said, if the fellow did that, I only recognize you and the grandchildren. He go and stay outside. Kick him out. Oh, but he also got money. Lah, and I said, no. uh, then finally, amicably resolved. Lah. Then she, she lived her life. Lah, like what I advise her. Yeah. You resolve it amicably, then they like that, they promise you they will take care of you, take care of the grandchildren. Maybe. So resolve. Lah. But you have to sacrifice a bit. Lah, and I said, no. But I said, this is because in the past you did two people. And I said, no. So come in now, got condition, you become the victim. But they got part of me. Because she, this line, not from wealthy family, but born quite pretty, you know. That's how I got that karma out. That did wealthy fellow, huh? Finally marry him, you know. And then, he entangled the film star, you know. Then he said, film star, you know. Hope you understand me, you say. And this is what I want, you know. You say. This is life, you no. Know. Your husband talk to you like that, how? Huh? Huh? Agree, ah? <laughs> no, mind. no need to answer. <laughs> okay, continue. Sorry, interrupt you. Uh, Alicia. Actually,我想讲的是 就是当我们在学佛的过程里面的所谓的sincerity 想把它带过去 其实你要真的下定决心，对对对，在你你你在佛或者佛菩萨面前，你要真的很诚恳，就所谓的那个就是所谓的sincerity，就是说你真的认为我错了，我要改过，我要忏悔，我要忏悔，我要改过，对，
the Tao Yu ah, he forgot to buy the ticket for the museum ah, then didn't get the ticket. So you try to justify for what? You admit lah, understand lah. You make a lucky he admit. Ah, then somebody say, ah yeah, happened already. Now why? Ah, so resolve ah. Then he say, ah, as alternative, what you want to where you want to take ah, or how you want to compensate? So he say, I take you to the plaza. The bazaar, wow! Everybody put out the hands of cock. Just shopping, ma, and most of them lazy. You know. uh, so resolve, understand? Uh, okay, continue. Thank you. Very good, Sadhu. Uh, so, Virgil, um, this so called sincerity is from within. Because within the core, the core type. 每一个每一个呃刹那刹那，我们要去呃观我们的心态，到底我们的心里面是怎样？虽然可能会偶尔会有一点贪心啊，什么不用紧， yeah. 呃去 aware 它，然后去、嗯、呃慢慢的把它改过来， Correct. 也不要说把它推开哦。啊、uh, ， no need to suppress, control and push、嗯。是的。Accord and flow. Develop the understanding to straighten your view, to retrospectively reverse all this. Why you have problem? Because you perceive a negativity. You don't have the wisdom to accept the reality of the moment, which is what is. Understand? So remember, whatever happened, accept it first. Yeah, correct. Correct, ah. Huh? Wow. Ah. Ah, uh, you know, whenever you unhappy, ah, uh, whenever you go so, the evil roots are there, and so on, huh? So excited. Yeah. Hey, pass the mic. Ah. The one. Oh, the one. Okay. Never mind. We respect Auntie Song. Ah, uh, but that reaction very good. Oh. Correct. Uh, you all uh, don't know how to shout. Ah, true. Ah, correct. Ah, my child, I let me, I let me show. Me and Jay, father. Ah, we never divorced. Ah, four months is make me sick. I say go your way. Yeah, we didn't divorce because of my pension. Yeah, I say if I anything happen to me. The pension can go to my son. Correct. Because my Sadu. father is there. Ah. If I, I just if he still survive, but he died already. Ah. <laughs> ah. That's why I think why 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 must we create more problems? Correct. Ah. So we face it, and then uh, I divorce. I know divorce break from my family. Yeah. But when my mother, my family all don't know. Yeah. Sadu. So Very it's, good. It's maybe our karma. Yeah, your karma. Accept it. It's okay. Yes. And then That's why. I I brought up day by myself. Yeah, your suffering reduced a lot. Understand, no? Yeah. That acceptance free her, no? Otherwise, ah, uh, you holding on to this, ah, uh, for how many years? Because you feel cheated, mistreated, understand, no? So you through grasping the memory hole, but the moment when you make the decision, accept, lah. Happened already, ma. Understand, lah. Whether you song or song, that is the reality. Understand, lah. That's why anti song. Understand, lah. <laughs> so anti song understand what is song or song. Ah. Also accept. Understand, lah. Because it's ah. so useful for you to fight because you don't know what will happen later. You you realize or not? Ah. You realize or not? When we started the sharing, ah. Until now, uh, the whole area. Wow. And before that, when you meditate, you realize what happened. Uh, the rain uh, was so heavy. You know, until I know there uh, is something is going to happen. Uh, that's why I come up. Then I went back. I of course I got to ease myself. Uh, you know, I drink a lot of water, cold weather. Then after that, I lie down. Then I realize, uh, meant to be. Uh, After the sharing must be something they already know, no? That is going to be very important because the appendix three or four, three, ah. Song also can recognize, oh, take to what macam, no? That's ah. This one I tell you, ah, you cannot find one. This one is Krishna Muti teaching, no? Combined with Buddha's teaching, no? Words different, 
expression different, but meaning same. That's why the wise one, they can realize the truth each for themselves. Nobody else can understand. But you have the Dhamma, whatever word they use, no problem. You can understand. Okay? Yeah, Come say hello. Uh, continue. The other thing, uh. you don't tell bad things to your Correct. Your husband. Back Correct. Back Correct. Look, today I never tell Jay anything about Yeah, you. sadhu. Avoid oh. negativity, Anasa. That is backbiting, Anasa. No. Create more emotion. Don't try to explain to the world. Why? The world is the world, Anasa. No. Deluded people say deluded things. Selfish people do selfish things. Ignorant people do ignorant things. Would you want to go and explain? Uh? Justify? Uh? Wasting your time, lah, understand? Uh? You myself have a good sleep at home, understand? Uh? They say what? Save your energy, understand? Uh? To explain all uh? say, What for? The nature's law record, understand? Uh? What you do, uh? law of karma is there to look after you. Why are you scared? Take care, Kamala. Yeah, that's right. Ah, that's see? right. Very right. Ah, you know I, I managed to buy. You know, I, I never do direct selling. Mm. But the first time I enter direct selling, I opened up two hundred over thousand. Oh. Within uh, after I come back, uh, before I go to Buddha Gaya, within eight months, I make eight uh, two hundred over thousand. That's why I managed to buy the house. Oh, sadu, sadu, uh, sadu. You know, what, what, see. Ah, what do you get? This is Dana Parami. Cheng Siye Parami. You will receive a bell. He has the understanding, although he don't like Dhamma. Like he said, Dr. J want her to come. I said, he never attend retreat. <laughs> one, no. I think, oh. uh, Adeline also knows. He came to my house. I said, I don't go. Lah. Yeah, oh. he said, Buai Chi. But then finally end up here. No. Oh, then he came and tell me at the dinner. No. But you. Uh, Come say hello. Thank you. I learned a lot. <laughs> yeah, to this trip I learned a lot. Ah. Although, uh, although I was from Methodist Church. Yeah. Methodist Church. I'm yeah. as well MOF. I'm also MOF. Yeah. I'm very active. I'm a very active person. Yeah. So I, I love to go for him. Yeah. Everything. But I don't know why Jay can become a Buddhist so long. <laughs> ah, sadhu. <laughs> He went to Lumbidi, he made an aspiration that I will go to Buddha Gaya. Yeah. When he went to Buddha Gaya, he, he checked with them. My mother come with him, my mother come with him. <laughs> I told him, I said, I don't go. Huh? I tell you, I don't go. You go, I said, okay. <laughs> but because I applied for the leave already, yeah. I go. Uh. Ah. I went for one month. Ah. And that changed, changed me a lot. Uh. Uh. Yes, so, definitely. That's why you, I, I joined Buddha And you know why? Blindly, blindly. <laughs> Yeah, you know why at this song, this type of thing can happen? Ah, but, but I got an explanation on based on what I know. Actually, Dr. J, he want to repay uh, her credit, uh, his gratitude. Uh, don't get it wrong, uh, become girl. Uh, his gratitude and his fellow idea. Uh, you know the Buddhists, uh, the Buddha mentioned, uh, you want to repay your parents. Uh, even you carry them uh, on your shoulder uh, for 100 years, uh, you cannot repay. Understand? You heard of this, isn't it? Yes. What must you do? Bring them to the Dhamma. Understand? That's why Dr. J do that. And you know why you can come or not? Your parami. Because you requested to Dr. J to have the house dana at Papmasuri house. You know that house dana, how much joy, you know? so many kaya mitake, and he cooks so well. You know? All the food my wife and me like, you know, sambai sotong. Uh. Sambai petai. Ah, petai, sotong, and all those things. So, you are still here, vegetarian, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we, will do, we will do it again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, uh, Thank you, uh, brother Tio, yeah, that yeah. Uh, I learned a lot from this thing. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. that's why I feel, just now I want to... A lot of joy, I, yeah. I want to speak it up because I feel, you don't keep... Yeah, uh, don't hold inside. Don't keep yourself, don't, don't make uh, more... Correct. 
create more affliction. Understand? Don't, 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 uh, 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 no point. The bad will come to you. Correct. <laughs> so, that is a law of karma. That's uh. why I, I'm very happy. Uh, I learned a lot from my son. Uh, and then so I was good. the first uh, Chinese to be a city for Malacca State. Yeah. Uh, that's why I feel, why must we, I be the first? Uh? I always get the first one. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. I get the first, you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was the first to help uh, Bajarana. To, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The yeah. monks come and look. Yeah, you do a so lot of dana. Work. Even ABC also, you help a lot. Uh, yeah. I, I be the first to do ABC. And then now, uh, when he said, Mommy, do dana, do we are going to do dana. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. They are waiting for us. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I feel, I want to share is that. We yes, have, yes. We don't have grudge. Don't think of. Correct, sadhu. Yeah, Very I, good. Yeah, I, uh, sadhu. When the when SK is a big uh, temple in yeah. Malacca, yeah, uh, Yeah. then they, 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 uh, they, they have their own. They have thousands of people, but they still probably the cook all. Yeah. So I, I use the word when the the president some can you cook or not? I said, thank you very much. You give me opportunity. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. The word opportunity. Yeah. You know why must be I? Yeah, uh, that is a selfish thinking, and that's all. I don't think. Ah, uh, when you don't have any negativity, selfish, uh, you instead become different. You thank them for giving you the opportunity, and that's all. Now. That's how dharma work. Don't everything also concrete. Hey, why me? Why you don't call the other? Actually, they give you opportunity, condition, and that's all. Now, to develop wholesomeness. So all these are the understanding. Very good, Auntie Song. Thank you, Auntie Song. Come here. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so they are, uh, they are uh. saying, we must always take the opportunity to what given. Correct, the correct, the correct. Only, uh, what must I, what yeah. must I do, what must I do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can never get what? Uh, correct. You cannot be selfish to gain things. Uh, to gain things, like the law of karma, you reap what you sow. You must have a... Virtuous and good mind, then no negativity, then you will be beautiful. Uh. Okay. Uh. Page 226. Yeah. Then, after that, what did Krishna Murti say? Awareness, on the other hand, is not self induced, nor is it the outcome of practice. So you don't go and foolishly practice to be mindful. You only need to train your mundane mind to be quiet while you're anchoring it to something so that you will not wander off, so that it can stay with the object of meditation, so that it can be with the moment without thought. After you had angered it, you have to stabilize it until it becomes very quiet and still. Anchor it through what? Through that awareness. Since the mind can only do one thing at a time, so if you think a lot, then how can you train the mundane mind? So you have to anchor it to something, so that it doesn't wander off. Just aware of it, and it's just aware of in and out breath. You train the mundane mind to just be mindful of the in and out breath, until one day, when this mundane mind comes to realize that, it, that if it listens to you, it will be very peaceful. If it didn't listen to you, it will become very heedless. This is the beginning. That's why I say, the moment you can train your mind to be aware, that's only the beginning of real meditation. Now you understand what I meant. Last time you all could not understand. Question. You mean after attending all the retreats, I come back, I still haven't started the real meditation? <laughs> True or not? Yes. Huh? Yeah, you haven't stabilized your mindfulness, understand? Huh? Not until you have a stable daily mindfulness, the real meditation cannot be hit. If you don't have a stable mindfulness, means what? You cannot be heedful, understand? Huh? In the midst of life. You are only peaceful when you are in a retreat. Condition state, understand? Huh? Formal meditation. But you are heedful in the midst of life, means like Dhammapada verse 21, the heedful never die. So, all these are very clear, okay? Now, continue, uh, Maya. Brother, do you answer? Yes, you haven't started. 
because you could not understand what sati is. So sorry, ah, I very blunt. Ah. Uh, yes, you have a stutter. <laughs> that kaya meta must be, ah, posong. Ah. <laughs> you mean I went in and out of retreat so many years now. I learned Dhamma so many years, I, the real meditation haven't started. Because sometimes, thought base is like that. Okay, next. 5.3.12 Understanding the contents of consciousness. Now, after you have developed the understanding, you can really laugh because heedlessness is like that. The mundane mind is like that, and you cannot differentiate between the two. Your true mind and the thinking mind, which is also the mundane mind or deluded Sakaya Diti mind, we sell delusion. Then what else did Krishna Muti say? Awareness, on the other hand, is not self-induced, nor is it the outcome of practice. It is an understanding, which is wisdom to understand what thought is and all the related problems that thought had created. Content of consciousness means the hidden as well as the superficial. You know what is the hidden? The hidden is your subconscious and unconscious, that one you cannot see. Whereas, superficial is the conscious mind. So you have to develop the whole understanding of the whole contents of that so-called thought, which is related to your so-called problems. When you grasp and cling deludedly to the thought which is your five mental aggregates of form and mind, they will become grasping aggregates and then suffering will arise. So your whole of suffering or problems which is related to the contents, both the hidden and the superficial, you must develop the understanding of it. Then how do you do it? According to JK, the surface must be understood for the hidden to show itself. The hidden cannot be exposed if the, sun, if the surface mind is not quiet. So when the chattering is still going on, how can you meditate? Do you understand? That mundane thinking mind has to be quiet. Only then there is sati and samadhi. Then only you can meditate. Otherwise, the spiritual faculties of sati and samadhi cannot arise. Sati is just a silent inner awareness and Samadhi is the stability of it. These Sati and Samadhi also haven't developed as yet and you want to meditate. So who meditates? The thought meditates. The spiritual faculties are still not there yet and you want to meditate. That's why you are wasting your time. Thought-based meditation has this problem because the thought is actively noting and labeling. Concept after concept. The next, the next word explains it even better. JK explained to you how verbalization dulls the mind. So I will read the quote again. The surface must be understood for the hidden to show itself. The hidden cannot be exposed if the surface mind is not quiet. 5.3.13 silent the mundane mind to develop understanding. So, you have to really, really silent the mundane mind to develop the understanding. The whole process of understanding the thought has nothing to do with words, verbalization, nor is it a matter of mere experience, because experience is also from the thought. Who experience? The thought experience. Pleasant and unpleasant, nice and not nice. Awareness doesn't experience anything. Awareness has got no mental state and there is no like or dislike. The experiencing comes from the mundane mind. So the next word, word is what? Verbalization and verbalization indicates what? Yes, dullness of, my, of mind. And you, all, and you all some more go and note rising, rising, falling, falling, etc to make your mind even more dull. But if you know how to do chanting, then it is different. The, vib the vibration comes out and the awareness is aware of it, which is not the thought noting another thought. When you are aware of the thought, it is different thing, it is sati. Thought will arise 
because upon contact it will trigger off, trigger off. And there is awareness which can be with the moment of contact, at the moment of the arising of consciousness. Just like what the Buddha said, in the seeing, it is just the seeing consciousness. When Sati is aware of the moment of consciousness, then it can understand how the mind conditioned by the content of consciousness move or stir inside. You can be with the moment to be aware of them all. That's why Sati can see thought and Sati can see all the aggregates of thought, but thought cannot see awareness. So this one is a very important understanding because Krishna Muti said, verbalization indicates dullness of mind. An experience being what? Cumulative means what? Ah, yes, memory. You accumulate what you experience as memory. That's why Mahayana Buddhism said the second noble truth is accumulation or chi. The four noble truths they recite as Hu Chi Miao Tao. Miao Tao. It never say cause of suffering. It said you continue to accumulate suffering. There is accumulation. So accumulation being cumulative makes for repetition. You know why JK said that? When you accumulate as memory, that is your downfall. Because if you cannot see that it's just a thought that you retrieve via memory, then it will condition your craving, your positive and negative cravings. Because you had that experience before. Let's say you come across nice food or beautiful experience or good meditative experiences. Then what happened? Next time, when you do your meditation or when you eat something, you want to compare and you want to measure through what? Memories. Wow! Last time, that shot very nice. Or my last meditation was so beautiful. Then you make a wish. How nice if I can repeat the experience. Then your meditation becomes what? Good and bad meditation experiences. Then what are you doing? Then where is your heedfulness? Where is the training? Then where is the Noble Eightfold Path? That's how you lost your focus. Do you understand? Because you got distracted by the very peaceful and calm state of that meditative experience. That's why JK said, experience being cumulative makes for repetitiveness. Meaning you want it to be repeated. That's how you develop habits. That's how you get into delusion. That's how you become afflicted. When things don't go your way and when you cannot get what you want, suffering is the result and that's one of the first noble truth realities that can condition one's suffering. And you still happily are playing with it, thinking that you are very great. Wow, I want to meditate until I get back that state. So now, you start to understand why all these are actually foolishness and delusion, isn't it? 5.3.14 Awareness is not determination. The next time is what? Oh, sorry, the next line is what? Awareness is not a matter of determination. You cannot determine to be aware because who determine? The thought determine. For purpose, for purposive direction is resistance and because that thought direct meaning you want things your way that's why you resist that's why I say you have to accord and flow if you want to be free meditation is not about resisting anything you just relax and silent accord and flow and be with the moment then you will understand then JK continued which tends towards exclusiveness means what? The egoic mind wants that. Me and I can do this implies very exclusive. I already improved. My meditation is already not bad. And all these are thoughts. So that's why when you determine, then there is a direction. There is a goal where you want to walk towards. That's why the moment you want to be an ar arahan, you are that already. Because the becoming kills you spiritually. Who wants to become? The thought wants to become. 
and becoming is craving. The moment you have craving, you cannot realize the enlightenment. 5.3.15 The Awakening So don't try to become anything. Just silent and sincerely, patiently cultivate. Then you will awaken. The moment the mundane mind awakens and realizes itself and sees, that's wisdom. And when wisdom arises, there is no more delusion. That's why you could see things as they are. You awaken to the three universal characteristics of nature. There is no more delusion and thought will have no more power over you. Then you see things as they are, which is beyond thought, beyond time. Otherwise, you will continually use thought, which is psychological time. Then you will be trapped in time and trapped within the field of thought. 5.3.16 The mystery of life unfolds. Then, next one is what? After, awareness is the silent and choiceless observation of what is. It said, in this awareness, the problem unrolls itself. I prefer to use the word unfolds itself. This can happen because when you silent and aware, the phenomenon will tell you the story. Your silent mind will understand. The awareness without thought will awaken to it and understand what it is. That is how you will understand without word. How contact triggers off consciousness. Not only consciousness, within the content that you input into. There is also feeling which will simultaneously also arise. You will come to know them all, not through the textbook, not through the one-dimensional dependent origination that says, upon contact, feeling arises. Then you go look for the feeling. This is so gullible, isn't it? Just like the physics experiment. Upon contact, consciousness comes to be. The mind becomes conscious first. And then, within, there is also the content of consciousness where perception and feeling also arise. Then feeling will be stirred and be conditioned into craving because of sakayaditi or self-delusion due to your lack of wisdom or wise attention, yoniso manasikara, at the moment of contact. You got instead ayoniso manasikara or unwise attention. So this is how living being gets into trouble. So when you understand all this, the whole mystery of life like slowly unfolds itself. Then you will start to understand how you function as a human being following the dependent origination or the 12 links. That's why when you develop the silent mind, don't try to know anything. And when you meditate, don't try to know or try to say, is this sati or is this anicca or is this what the Buddha meant as anatta. But after the meditation, you can reflect and contemplate. But when you are meditating or doing it, never ever do that. If you do that, what does it mean? The thought is trying to come in from the back door to tell you all these things. Then how can you be in sati anymore? Who say it is anicca? Your thought, right? That is why dharma-based and thought-based meditation will have all these problems. Oh, I realized already. This is what the book say. This is what the Buddha said. All these are your thoughts, verbalization. Question by Sister Bilan. Is this the reason why when you go for certain retreats, they don't allow you to read books? Brother Theo answered, Yes, there is some truth in that statement, i.e. when you meditate, don't read anything. But it does not um, apply to everybody. Because some people who had cultivated in the past, if they read, the moment they read truth, they can awaken straight away to it. So it doesn't mean that you cannot read. You can read, but don't attach or carry that information or knowledge in your brain. When you meditate, have an open mind. That's what choiceless awareness is all about. Don't in a meditation verbalize, Oh, I remember what the textbook said, what the Buddha said. Then you are finished or become heedless already. Understand or not? Actually, it is not the Buddha or the textbook. It is your thought that said, and you cannot see at all. 
and you some more say you got sati and you still think you are such a great meditator by saying that I have been meditating for 20, 30 or 40 years already so don't come and tell me all these bullshit <laughs> but actually they cannot see their own thoughts they keep on quoting the books or the texts wire their thoughts which is accumulated knowledge and not wisdom and because they cannot see their own thoughts they become deluded 5.3.17 Voluntary, involuntary and spontaneous actions Question by Mr. Chai Breathing or heartbeat we don't have to think about it because it will go on by itself but, we, but when we come to the unconsciously subconsciously or voluntary and involuntary actions how do you develop the understanding? Brother Dio answered you ask about voluntary and involuntary actions, right? So, you have to ask yourself, what is action? Action is the form and mind or human being doing something through the thought, correct or not? Then, voluntary action means there is a will involved as against spontaneous action when you don't think. Within the field of thoughts and awareness, there are three types of actions, voluntary, involuntary and spontaneous but for your case you only have two because you are only within the field of thoughts you studied biology before voluntary actions is when you have a will to define what you want or intend to do like if I want to come out of my sitting then voluntary I come out of my sitting but for the biological experience it is different you put your legs cross up, then the biology teacher used a rubber hammer to knock your knee. Automatic and involuntarily, it reacts. That one is involuntary action. That one has nothing to do with thoughts, intention, but from your physical. True nerves respond, it just moves. That involuntary action, whereas that's involuntary action, whereas Voluntary action is through your will. The third one is wire wisdom, spontaneous action. No will is involved, no desire, no craving, no pre-planning, no checking with the memories to inquire whether to do or not or don't do. Like, like that better or like, like that better or like that better. If you act like that, it means you don't have wisdom. If, if you have wisdom, you don't have to think or consider, but instead, you just act spontaneously because, according to JK, acting according to memory is not acting at all. You only consider and think initially. Just like when the Buddha taught the Kalama Sutta to the Kalamas, he said, whatever they teach you to do, you have to check. If I do, does it harm myself or harm others? Ah. That one you use thought to develop the understanding initially. Then you decided to do or not to do. Then if it is the truth, if it doesn't hurt you and hurt or harm others, then you do. When you cultivate until you awaken already, you will do things spontaneously via wisdom. You don't think anymore. Because the thought is always selfish and egoic, via wisdom you act spontaneously. That's why, that's why that day in the Thursday class, someone told me she can do things spontaneously already. Ah, it was Sister Ingbi. While in the office, there was a colleague who earlier on had a misunderstanding with her. The colleague thought she was the one who did his year-end appraisal. He was not happy because he didn't get a good appraisal, but later on, the, on he came to know that his appraisal was not done by Sister Ingbi. Then a few days later, after, Cameron, after the Cameron Highlands retreat, she brought some strawberries to her office and placed it on the table near the storeroom. Then this colleague of hers walked by and spontaneously she talked to him. She said, there are some small st strawberries that I brought from Cameron Highlands and you can have it. It is quite nice. Surprisingly, he was very friendly and at, at that time, Ingby didn't feel anything, but later on, when she was on her own, then 
și uh, with her awareness. Yeah, I I missed the line as well. <laughs> Never mind. She uh, if she had thought about it, she would have approached this colleague because there was already the memory that said this colleague doesn't like me, so it may arise some misunderstanding if I approach him. When she recalled and reflected upon this incident, she just smiled because suddenly this colleague was not like before anymore, so friendly already. He already like would respond with such pleasantness and is now so different. So this is the difference between spontaneous action that happens naturally and the one with the planned approach via thought consideration, which is not natural at all. 5.3.18 check and question the thought. People can see it because that planning is the thought and thought is always selfish and egoic before you become enlightened. That's why before you become enlightened, try not to use so much thought. When you have straightened your will already, then you can use thought. Otherwise, thought is very dangerous. That's why Byron Cathy asks you to check and question the thought. Is it true? Are you sure it is absolutely true? You sure say it is the truth. And then, with a third question, you will start to understand how thoughts delude you. The third question is, what happened when you think that thought? Oh, I became miserable. Then her fourth question, without those thoughts, how, how will you be? Oh, before those thoughts, I was normal, happy and beautiful. Then you will come to realize that all these thoughts that make you unhappy, miserable, fearful, selfish, with the evil roots, are all wrong thoughts deceiving you. That's why the Buddha states it clearly in the Noble Eightfold Path that you must have right thought, born of right views or right understanding. How to, arise, how to arise right thoughts? The user of thought is very important, isn't it? If the user is deluded, how can it be right thought? If the user of thought is deluded, thought will be evil. That's why you must put in the right effort to cultivate virtue, goodness, kindness, etc. to arise the right thoughts that are still not in you after you have straightened your views. To have right views, you must understand the five universal orders of law that govern all of life and existence, especially the law of karma, karma niyama, and the law of the mind, citta niyama. Otherwise, without the straightening of your views, via the right views, your thought will always be wrong thought. 5.3.19 Habitual tendencies and memories Question by Brother Chai How about habits or habitual tendencies that condition our actions? Brother Tio answered, You don't follow habitual tendencies. Habit is what? Memory, do you understand? Because you accumulate experiences, experiences that you like from your habit, experiences that you don't like also become your habit. That's why you have likes and dislikes. Immediately after you see something, you react so fast. Immediately after you hear something, you reacted already. Smell, taste, tactile and thought, you also do the same. Why do you react? because you have become so heedless and heedlessness develops habitual tendencies. And what are habitual tendencies? No need to think also you will react that way because that is your habitual tendencies and it comes from your conditionings via your wrong views. Especially so, your self-delusion which will condition you to arise the three real roots of greed, hatred and delusion to react to sense experiences thereby making you heedless. This heedless mind will condition you to have very strong habitual tendencies to discriminate, react and do things following your wrong views. That's why when you hear something from your wife, especially for a married couple, straight away you will react. You may say, ah, I know what you want to say already, that's enough. You may also do it to your son or your children because it has become so habitual. Every time you scold them using the same words like told you not to do so to do, you still want to do. Then one day your children may react back 
and say, ah, mommy or daddy, that's enough. I know what you want to say. Then what happened? You will become very sore, is it? Isn't it? All these can arise because you are not conscious and aware or shifu at that time. The habitual tendencies took over. Through what? Through your anger, your selfishness, your unhappiness, etc., which are your evil roots, born of wrong thoughts that condition your habitual tendencies. Because you already given it some thought and you accumulated all these unhappy thoughts via your memories, then they become what? Your anusaya or latent tendencies. No condition, they don't come out. Got condition, like machine gun, they just pop up. No need to think at all because you already memorized and pre plan as to what you want to do the next time when you, the same situation arises. Then you will retort. You think you're very good. You also like that before. Why? Because of the so-called latent tendencies, waiting to erupt when there's, it, there is condition for it to arise. So human beings, due to their heedlessness, do a lot of these foolish things. Can follow? 5.3.20 Wisdom Understanding fully and completely. Now we continue with JK's quote. In this awareness, the problem unfolds or unrolls itself, and thus it is fully and completely understood, which means no more fragmented, no more only this fragment, that fragment, and instead you act with complete understanding, as opposed to thought which is limited and fragmented, because thought cannot see the totality, the overall. That's why thought-based meditation cannot develop wisdom and understanding. Thought can become cunning, smart or intelligent. Thought can be very intellectual, but it cannot develop wisdom. Thought can only develop knowledge which is, which is rigid. J. Gates said, A problem is never solved on its own level. Being complex, it must be understood in its total process. So, just like what I told you, what I had told you all just now, you cannot have a fragmented solution to spiritual understanding. Spiritual understanding tends needs the total understanding of the whole of the thought and its contents and their lim and their limitation. Also, how thoughts divide wire words and concepts to deceive you into conflict, argument, wars and attachment, etc., to arise the fear and suffering in you, and how thoughts protect project to arise the illusional time of past and present, which are never the reality to deceive you, make you heedless. It cannot be at the fragmented level when thought analyzes things or the way thought looks at things because thought being limited and egoic only looks at things from the logic side, from knowledge and the intellect aspect. That's why I used to share with you all this quote. Whatever that is logical, may not necessarily be the truth, and it is usually always the opposite. This Krishna Muti quote, if I don't explain, I don't think any one of you can understand. But after my explanation, you can at least at the intellectual knowledge level, develops a very high degree of understanding, and that will have established and stabilized a base for you to receive truth then, after that, if you meditate with understanding diligently, you can awaken very fast. Because if you already had that taste, then with an open mind, the moment you see truth, straight away it will connect. Connect to what you had reflected and contemplated earlier on. For you had understood what that thing is. Then the whole thing just arises and you just awaken. Ah, that's what J. Krishnamurti meant because you have seen it in the awareness itself, which means the truth had been realized, no more theory. And you will keep on experiencing this type of awakening because when your contemplative dharma is very stable, meaning you have straightened your views, then you can understand very easily. Through this understanding, what will happen to you? You will be no longer deluded by thought-based meditation. By then, the egoic mind, you can see very clear already. Then unknowingly, it will slowly develop the stability of understanding 
and wisdom that will start to change you the way you live your life the way you think the way you approach thing and the way you become aware of things you will be no longer like before not like before anymore the thought tries to be aware you will just know how to train your mind to just be silent silent means what if your monday mind is still heedless then you need to decondition it via the mind sweeping method then after that develop anapanasati to anchor and stabilize it or use whatever other skillful means that you are familiar with like chanting rising and falling of the abdomen or your heartbeat etc and after that when it is already stable you you just silence your mind in meditation so that this mindfulness become more and more stable until it develops samadhi then you can use that to meditate a problem is never resolved on its own level means not look at it in a fragmented way then being complex or complicated it must be understood in its total process means the whole of the content with that within the thought plus the way of thought power of thought to divide to the root to develop the egoic mind with self delusion to be selfish possessive and fearful etc need to be understood and all these can be understood while you're just silencing your mind and maintain a choiceless awareness then you will be able to see how the mind stirs and how the habitual tendencies come to be and how craving comes to be how attachment comes to be and how it, it conditions grasping becoming and birth leading to all the suffering this is seeing the dependent origination or twelve links and the four noble truths within your own form and mind the three evil roots the five mental hindrances and the five spiritual faculties via your sati that's the real meditation that's why in the sati patana sutta especially under dhamma nupasana the first category practice is awareness and mindfulness of the five mental hindrances followed by the five aggregates of form and mind then the six internal sense spaces and the external sense spaces or the 18 sense realms followed by the awareness of the seven factors of enlightenment because by then you are very near to enlightenment and the seven factors of enlightenment will keep on arising after that you will become very mindful of the four noble truths you will see and understand them all then all the three turnings of the four noble truths you will know how to do them that's how your meditation can take off then jk continue to try to solve a problem only one level whether physical or psychological leads to further conflict and confusion you cannot do it in a fragmented way for the resolution of a problem there must be this awareness which is sati this passive awareness not an active one which reveals its total process an active one means the thought has come in to interfere already then reveals its, its total process here means is to see the whole of the happening you see it happening you see how the mundane mind gets conditioned out how upon contact consciousness comes to be in the meditation itself when you are silent you will witness all this arising then the dependent origination is no more a theory because upon contact you really feel it inside your meditation at the sense basis because your awareness is always within the moment you can only be aware of what is within the moment and it's not a thought because thought is the movement away from the silence after that thought then can project into the future and recall the unhappy past or scars of memories that's why thought is never in the moment thought is response to memory hence it is the past within the view of the known and thought cannot touch the unknown for the resolution of a problem there must be this awareness this passive alertness which reveals its total process alertness is what attention hence no thought just aware 
and then you just silent and aware during meditation. Then, with every moment of consciousness, you will witness the real Dharma arising from within your own form and mind, and not through theory. That is, how upon contact, consciousness and feeling comes to be. When meditating, always use sil- always just silence the mind and don't go and recall what the book of Paticca Samupada said, like, upon contact, feeling arise. Then, while meditating, you are looking for feeling. Who is looking? The thought is looking. That's why you cannot meditate like that. Otherwise, you will get caught and be deceived by your thought because you tend to look for insight in the form of Dharma, which is not the true insight. And who is looking? Again, the thought is looking. And you still think that is the true Dharma. You think, wow, I saw Anicca already. I saw dependent origination i.e. upon contact feeling arise but actually it is your thought look, looking for feeling and you feel with your thoughts which is not sati and yet you gullibly believe you have seen it then when people explain to you that upon contact apart from feeling consciousness also arise you say no 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 you are wrong because you meditate with the book or text knowledge with the thought but if you meditate with a silent mind, you will be very sure. You will understand and awaken without any words, thoughts or verbalization. When you have realized, it will be totally different because upon contact of mind, so many things actually happen. And he who had awakened can tell you that it is like what it is like, can tell you that it is like that and they don't have to check with the text. That is the real one. The moment you mention something, he can tell you straight away, yes, it is like that. Just like the sixth patriarch, Huynan, who was an illiterate, but the moment you speak the truth, he understands. Why? Because he had realized them in his meditation before. This is what J. Krishnamurti meant by, there must be an awareness in order to have this total understanding. Because thought cannot understand, then, this awareness, which is just passive alertness or attention, will reveal its total process. Because when you are silent, you are fully aware of what is happening. Then, phenomenon will show it to you clearly. There are three universal characteristics of impermanent, suffering and non-self or empty nature. Then you will also witness what the dependent origination or twelve links is all about what this world is all about, what life and existence are all about, what phenomenon is all about, not from the text or the theory part. When you just silence your mind, you can understand many things. That's why I always say, you don't try to know while you are meditating. You just silence and meditate sincerely with the faith and when the understanding arises, the form and mind will know and you will awaken to it. There is no thought involved, but just the awareness via the direct seeing. Then one awakens to it. Then the understanding is wisdom, the intelligence of Panya. And through that, you straighten your views, and you can live life with the understanding. That's why, after that, this form and mind does not suffer anymore, because it has got no more delusion, hence no more suffering. Note, please remind me to also explain the importance of this JK code during our sharing at the Tuesday and Thursday classes because the understanding of this JK's code is very important and very unique. Anyone who can understand this code, their minds will transform very fast. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, so, what you have heard uh, through Man Yuan's reading, you can understand my nature rejoice, Sadhu uh, Jiyo. Because this JK code is very, very profound. And he has the awareness, that's why he can understand. Uh. But when you have the Dhamma understanding, you can understand what he says. He may use different words. But through the understanding, that's why true wisdom 
can be realized only by the wise, each for themselves. Otherwise, it becomes thought based. Okay, good. What time are we? Oh, almost, huh? Okay. 31, plain or existent. This one, no need. Go back and read. Eh? We have gone through many rounds already. Then, Appendix 5, also no need. The 10, Dhamma Rhyme. We also have gone through many rounds already. Okay. Appendix 6. Yeah. Turn to Appendix 6. Yeah. This is the uh, Trinity Triangle. Okay. Training the mind via understanding the essential Dhamma and meditation as taught by the Buddha. Notes compound mainly from various talks given by me at Tiratana Buddhist Society Clang on the 20th June 2014. Thursday class, especially the one held at Brad Suyan's house, 10 July 2014. And March 2014 Cameron Highland Retreat at Sampo Temple. So all these are what we have gone through. Then we recorded the various talk. Eh? Then the notes were compiled from all this talk, eh? sent to me for editing. So you look at the Trinity Triangle. So the apex is C, eh? pure consciousness or pure awareness. This one is the oneness nature, essence of mind, your true nature, or your original nature, enlightenment mode. This is the unconditioned, beyond thought, beyond mind, beyond time. Beyond thought means beyond psychological time. Cannot be perceived or sensed. Stillness, the silent mind. So this is a pure awareness, eh? this that I shared with you earlier on. Eh? Then from here, you can either decide to use the awareness to develop the direct C to awaken, or use it to live life. How do you use it to live life? You perceive, shrink your spacious awareness and become a thought. Then you, through memory, Input your content. Clear? Yes. This is what human beings do. Eh? But because since birth until now, you are only familiar with thought. That's why you are always, oh, sorry, not you, all, eh? some of you are no more. Living beings, those who are heedless without the Dhamma, they always live life this direction. And what is this? Mundane living. Understand? And what is mundane living? Using the senses using the consciousness to trigger of the 18 sense rhyme, understand? Right? Thereby creating the five area of form and mind, eh, which is the living being. Then this one project and create the phenomenal world of consciousness. Understand? So if you read the Trinity Triangle, this one is typed out easier to understand. So from the apex, pure awareness or pure consciousness, if you go towards the right direction, the slope to the senses, this is to create mundane living huh? or mundane experiences. So the mundane thinking mind or consciousness developed through the sense bases. You have a body that has the sense bases. Then trigger of the five area of form and mind following the Paticca Samopada. So this five degree of form and mind got two aspects, as a human being, and the more important one is as a mental five degree of form and mind. Because the aggregate of mind, Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, Vinyana, the Sanya perceive and bring the external form into the mind. So four plus one, you also have your five aggregate. That's why the thought, which is the content of consciousness, plus the receptacle, the pure awareness, this one becomes the five aggregate. Understand? That is what thought is all about. Then, when you develop the pure awareness to the other direction, sloping towards the left, you develop understanding or wisdom. That this one is the silent mind, we are the direct seeing. 
we are sati or pure awareness. So this one, no thought involved. Understand? Huh? It is that nature, silent observation, or the silent mind to see things as they are, to insight into phenomena, to awaken. So when you develop understanding or wisdom, the Buddha call it wisdom born of right view, samaditi, and he call it yoniso manasikara. So once you develop this wisdom at the moment of sense experience, yoniso manasikara, then you can live life, understand? Not? Once you hear with the understanding and wisdom, you can live life. So this one, live life. That's why this is the noble life, understand? Not? So this one, Oh, I didn't write, huh? This line. So this is noble living. Okay? So the fine aggregate of form and mind is still there. But because the wisdom or uniso manaskara that is developed is connected to it. Because this form and mind, when you can locate your true mind via the pure awareness, when you silence your thought, then this one appears. Now, this one actually all the time there. Without thought, you're already there. That's why you know how to develop this awareness-based meditation. From here, you can develop the understanding which is the real awareness-based meditation. This one is thought-based living. There's some do meditation, thought-based meditation, understand? They are all involving thought. This one don't have the ability to use the awareness to come here. This one use awareness, shrink it through perception, Monday mind, and input the content and create thought, which is consciousness. And this one is a phenomenal world of consciousness. This one is a magician, understand? Project it over. Have a look. Okay. After that, my you can leave. Uh, read. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you can leave. <laughs> Six point one. A trained mind. The trained mind is always silent, heedful, peaceful, relaxed, and naturally aware within. He has the clarity born of inner peace and inner awareness to see things as they are, leading to the wisdom needed to arise the wise attention or Yoniso Manasikara at every moment of sense experience so that one is always at peace with the moment to live life. He will listen to you. If you want it to be silent, you will just be silent, peaceful and aware. It will just be so. You can use it and direct it appropriately to cultivate the noble eightfold path leading to the heedfulness. He will become like a servant to you. He will serve you well. The trained mind is ever mindful and constantly meditative. Hence, it is the base from which wisdom will keep on arising. 6.2 An untrained mind An untrained mind is heedless. It thinks a lot and reacts easily to sense experience and is constantly lost in thoughts most of the time. And as per Dhamma Hada verse 21, the heedless are as if that it is like a devil's workshop and will make you very evil. You have no control over it. It actually controls you and takes over your life, causing you suffering. The thinking mind, the mundane mind, which is heedless, needs need to be trained. Deluded with wrong views, it easily become angry, selfish, emotional and fearful, hence the suffering. It has no understanding of what is going on in life. It lacks wisdom because it is deluded. 6.3 Training the mind Without wisdom, living beings are heedless. Hence, they suffer because they don't understand life. To understand life, one must understand the secret of life, which is the Four Noble Truths truth as taught by the Buddha. To understand the Four Noble Truths, one must train one's mind to be heedful. To understand what is going on in life, so as to understand who we are, what we are, and how our mind function, so that we understand what causes us suffering and how our deluded mundane mind get muddled up in life. 
the untrained mind is heedless and not peaceful because of the five mental hindrance of sensual desire, ill will, slaw and topper, restlessness and doubt. These mental hindrances will hinder one from entering the meditative state of inner peace with inner awareness. And to overcome the five mental hindrances, one needs to cultivate the opposite five spiritual faculties of Sada, Viriya, Sati, Samadhi and Panya as taught by the Buddha. When the five spiritual faculties are there, the mental hindrances will be gone and the mind will be trained automatically. That is why you should work on the cultivation of the five spiritual faculties via your puja or devotional practices and daily religious routine. The three phases of Dharma are Pariyati, Patipati and Pativeda. First phase, Pariyati is the learning of the teaching or Dharma as taught by the Buddha. Second phase, Patipati is the cultivation via putting the Dharma learned onto practice in daily life so that it can become a living reality. Third phase, Pativeda is reaping the fruits of one's cultivation or hard work. Okay, maybe we stop here. Another final lesson. Okay, we stop here so that we can continue tonight. Huh? Then tonight left is not much. I think we can have more discussion tomorrow. Huh? More Q and A. Huh? More of the sharing that is related to life and your uh, newly acquired understanding eh? and what you can actually share to benefit others. It's just like Po Jeng said, when she was new, she didn't know anything. Other people share and the new people benefit as well. So what you have to share actually can benefit other people. Understand? Eh? You know how it benefits. It's not because of your sharing as so. well. Is because you create the condition for others to also share. And I can guide you all when you share. Then I can explain to you. Then through this, you develop understanding. And because it is an open sharing, one person share, everybody listen, everybody can benefit. Understand? Then they can rejoice. All these are very wholesome. True or not? Okay, so the end. Eh? Uh, so, okay, pay respect. Eh? Then maybe you can, those who are going for the what? Uh, five precept or you need a preceptor, you need some liquid food, you can also go down. Eh? Then we come back seven o'clock as usual. Okay. Mm. Ah, uh, yeah, can. Um, just a quick announcement. Anybody wants to uh, still donate to the common fund, which will be used to pay for the expenses and donations and all that, uh, please see me either at the break or latest by tonight. Please hand over the money so that I can try to tabulate all the accounts. Yeah. And, because uh, we, are, we are trying to top up so that we can give more, uh, donate more to them. The because Sri An is trying to close that account eh? because he needs some time. So if you still have intention to donate or contribute, they can still help you. Eh? Okay. Yeah. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Yeah.